Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to make a coffee infused chocolate chip cookie. And we're gonna use a little bit of science and technology to help us get the flavors and texture of these cookies to be the best that they can be. So the first thing we need to do is infuse the butter with the coffee. And the best way to do this is um, with an immersion cooker or a sous vide cooker. They go by a lot of different names, but essentially a sous vide machine. So here's the deal. Here's the science behind this. The oil, the fat in the butter, is a great way to distribute the coffee and vanilla flavor throughout the cookie. Um, the fat will dissolve certain flavonoids that wouldn't be dissolved by any other liquid in the cookie. So we want to melt together the butter, the coffee, and the vanilla in a hot water bath and steep it for about an hour. Now the absolute best way to do this would be to put everything into a vacuum seal bag, seal it under vacuum, and then put it into a sous vide machine. Um, by vacuum sealing it, the pressure that you're creating causes a better infusion. And if you put it into a sous vide machine, you're able to hold the 180 degree Fahrenheit temperature consistently. I have all of those things. But I also realize that a lot of people at home don't have it. So I just wanna show that you can do this without the special machines. You don't absolutely have to have all of that other gear. You can do it just with a Ziploc bag and a pot on your stove. Um, the temperature, 180 degrees, is pretty important, but it's not crucial as if you were cooking a steak or a piece of chicken. You just kind of need to hold it at this temperature roundabout. And this method is going to get you 90% of the way there. Just get as much air as possible out of the bag and leave it in here covered for about an hour. Once the hour is up, we're gonna take the butter out and we're going to filter it through a very fine mesh screen. Then we're gonna let it cool before we move on to the next step. Our coffee and vanilla infused butter smells absolutely amazing. Um, so it's cooled down enough. It doesn't have to chill all the way to being hard. You just don't want it hot when you put it in with the sugar. So the next thing is we're going to cream together the butter and the sugar until it's uh, light and fluffy. While that's mixing, let's deal with the dry ingredients. So we're gonna start off with standard all-purpose flour. To that, I'm gonna add some baking soda and some salt. All pretty standard to this point. Next in, I'm going to add this, carboxyl methyl cellulose, or CMC. Now, if you're, um, if you're worried about what this is, don't panic. I'm sure you've eaten it. I'm sure that if you've ever eaten anything um, grown on a plant or a plant, you've eaten this. It is really just cellulose gum. And we need about a teaspoon and a half of this. Now what this does in this context, usually it's something that is used as a thickener, a thickening agent in other things like soups and sauces, things like that. In a cookie, what it's going to do is it's going to bind with water and it's gonna hold that water. And by holding that water into the baking process, we're gonna get cookies that have a much better shape. Um, if you know how sometimes your cookie gets really flat and spreads out, even if you've put the dough in the fridge for a couple of hours to chill it down like you're supposed to, your cookies can go flat. This will keep them um, a little bit higher, a little bit better shape, um, and you don't have to go through the step of putting them into the fridge. You still can if you want. You can still freeze the dough after you've made it if you want. It's super simple, but that's what that's going to do. So it's just cellulose gum that's going to hold water. Next in is tapioca starch. Um, tapioca starch, again, is usually a thickener, and it is uh, what it sounds like. It's just uh, ground-up tapioca. It's made from cassava root. 
Um, I'm sure you've had tapioca. And it's usually used in recipes that are gluten-free um, because it will sort of replicate some of the things that gluten does in the recipe. Obviously, this is not a gluten-free recipe, so we're not trying to replicate that. So what this tapioca starch is going to do in the cookie is it's going to give a nice, crisp, brown exterior to the cookie while leaving the center a little bit more chewy um, without being hard and dense. That's the theory. So we're going to see what happens. I'm just going to mix these together. And uh, while I'm doing that, it looks like the butter and sugar is mixed together nicely. So let's crack in the eggs one at a time and mix them in. And the second egg... Looking good. So we'll spoon in the dry ingredients and we'll just mix it in until the flour disappears. Okay, it's all mixed together. Next and last is the chocolate chips. So put those in and I'm just going to mix those in by hand. Now just scoop them out onto a baking tray and bake them. So Glenn, hey friends, you said dinner is ready, but I see cookies. Yes, so that's a, that's chicken roasted with spicy salami and cauliflower. Great, there's that's cookies. Up, but there's cookies, <laughs> yes. So I made, fryer time, I made chocolate chip cookies. So give it a try and then we'll talk about it. There's, there's some, something special about there's, the chocolate, they there's, look great. There's some stuff going on here that... Okay, so they taste like chocolate chip cookies. They're great. Yeah. They're super crispy. Mm -hmm. um, more white sugar? Nope. So, less brown sugar? Like, that's usually how you get crispy. There's a depth of flavor there, too. There's a little mm -hmm. undertone that you're not picking up, which is good because you don't like coffee. Mm. But it's in there. Oh, there's coffee in it? So... Huh. I would I not have guessed that. I steeped the coffee in the butter. That would explain that. that... Yes. Yeah. The, so this is science. Science! Um, the crispy brown exterior mm -hmm. is because of the tapioca starch. So the tapioca starch okay. browns a little bit differently. So you get that, it's really crispy on the outside, yet it's kind of really nice and chewy on the inside, right? So. It's definitely got that crisp. I like the mm -hmm. crisp. Mm-hmm. Without being hard. Mm -hmm. They're crisp, not hard, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But this, you also It shatters some... when, you, when you bite it, rather than something that you have to crunch through. It's crispy. Now, the CMC, the... Carboxyl methyl cellulose? Yes, that's cellulose gum. Okay. And what that is doing, as I've already explained to the people at home, <laughs> is um, it retains moisture. Okay. So you notice the, the nice shape that we've got here on these cookies? Mm -hmm. Keeps them from going flat. Or it helps keep them from going flat. You can still get a flat cookie. If your kitchen is too warm on the day that you're baking them, <laughs> yes. you're still going to get a flat cookie. Yeah. But it, it helps it. with that and it helps with this sort of craggy look. Hmm. I'm in. Yeah. Um, the flavor's great. I would, if you're a real coffee fan, I would say... You could add more coffee. You could add more coffee or... Instead of putting in whole beans like I did, you could either crush them a little bit or grind them coarsely. Just to bump up that, that coffee flavor if you really like coffee flavor. But I think these are I think these are great cookies. And I think, you know, science, if science can Aha! if science can make your, your cookie better, um, I'm all for it. All right. In that case, I guess I'm gonna finish up my cookie and then I'm, I guess. And then we'll, we'll have go some... for supper. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.